this video is kind of a, a little bit about pollination but really more about the pollen tube growth. So remember that uh, pollination is just the transfer of a pollen grain with its little spiky exine perhaps if it's insect pollinated or nice and smooth exine and very small if it's not. Inside of the pollen grain you've got two nuclei, the tube nucleus and the generative nucleus. And the first thing is that it lands on top of the stigma, up at the top of the, of the female parts of the plants, and hopefully this will be on a different plant. And um, you've got the style, the ovary, and inside the ovary you've got the ovule, which is the embryo sac. plus integuments. So, down here we've got the female gamete and our male gamete has got to get quite a long way from the stigma down through the style uh, in, a, in order to be able to do fertilisation. So, this is where the tube nucleus comes into its own really and um, we said earlier that the tube nucleus controls the growth of the pollen tube but we don't even know what a pollen tube is yet. So, pollen grain has this protective tough exine to allow it to be dormant Inside, it's got two nuclei that we made by mitosis, so we've got the generative and the tube nucleus. So when it lands onto the stigma, the first thing that happens is that the stigma has a sugar solution. Um, so obviously sugar, we're, we're talking about uh, respiratory energy there. And the pollen grain germinates. Now don't confuse this with seed germination. So the sugar solution makes the pollen grain germinate. What that actually means is that it kind of bursts out of its exine and makes a pollen tube. So pollen tube is going to grow successively longer and longer and longer all the way making its way down towards the ovule. Now, <clears throat> this moves away from the air so we call it negative aerotropic growing away from the air. And it may also be positively chemotropic and be attracted to something in the ovule. Now if you think about it, it's going down through a pretty sort of um, solid tissue. So it's going to be just like the human sperm cell was, digesting its way through. So actually behind this tube is this sort of hive of activity whereby um, enzymes are being made and they're then being modified in the Golgi body and packaged into vesicles and those vesicles will be bursting out by exocytosis and releasing in front of it enzymes. And they're going to digest down through the style tissue. Now, the pollen grain is quite small, the pollen tube is quite long, there's obviously not enough stuff in this cell here to make an entire big long pollen tube, so there's also going to be some absorption of products there just to keep the whole thing going. And if you um, look on YouTube you'll see quite a lot of uh, pollen tube growth where it's showing cytoplasmic streaming and that's just helping that sort of those proteins and vesicles to get down to the tip so that they can release the enzymes to digest the style. 
Uh, you may also see um, in the olden days when I first started teaching we used to do a little experiment called a hanging drop experiment. So you would get a slide with a little cavity, preferably with a little cavity in it. And we put uh, little blobs of blue tack on the four corners of a cover slip and put them, lay the cover slip on top. Now, because the pollen grains are negatively aerotropic, so we then have this sort of drop of uh, sugar solution. And I've deliberately called it sugar and not sucrose. And because the pollen grains are, the pollen tubes are negatively, they're growing away from the air, they actually then, they, they kind of grow out along the surface of the slide. So you can see that there might be various things that you could use that to investigate. I mean, you can, you can measure the pollen tube. And from that, you can calculate if you know the time, the rate, by how much it's grown, uh, divided by the time it's taken to grow that long. Uh, you could put, uh, you can raise the temperature, so you could investigate the effects of temperature. You can put uh, additives into there. Uh, there are quite a few commercially available uh, additives that you could add in to see if it does affect um, pollen tube growth. You could uh, remove the oxygen, in which case they should grow everywhere. Uh, all around your hanging drop, that might be a bit more difficult to see. You could alter the pH. So there are all sorts of things you could do about measuring the lengths. Obviously this, this you do with the eyepiece. So you do that in eyepiece units. Um, but that is kind of it. So you need to be aware that it is making enzymes. So synoptically speaking you're talking about mitochondria providing energy, you're talking about endoplasmic reticulum, rough endoplasmic reticulum, making the enzyme, Golgi body, sort of activating it, modifying it, packaging it into vesicles, and the vesicles bursting at the end. And you need to be able to compare that to that digestion through the zona pellucida idea. And I think it's always a good idea for any of the topics that we do to have a look at some other some experiments that might be able to be done. Um, and the hanging drop one is an absolute classic.